Hello all. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss modeling of memory using Verilog. Okay. So memory is a very important element when we go for uh, digital design. You will have to store a lot of data, especially in image processing, video processing application. So we'll have to uh, design some memory. So memories again comes in different varieties. As you know, uh, we can have RAMs, random access memory, read-only memory, ROMs, and we can also have five first in first out. Uh, kind of memory. Okay, so we'll be looking at them one by one. So basically, first we'll see uh, how to declare multi-dimensional arrays in Verilog, and from there how we can model memory. So I'm taking a, a RAM as my example. So first, let's see the abstract view of a random access memory. Again, this you can have different kind of random access memory. Let me take a simplest one. So I treat it as a black box now. From external world, what we can see, uh, we will have a clock because this is definitely a sequential circuit because it's a memory element. A clock will be going to the memory and the memory will be operating based on this clock. Then if you want to write some data to the RAM, you will have to provide few signals. Basically, write enable, which basically says I want to write to the memory and you will also have maybe uh, write data. This is the data which will get written into the memory and write address. So which will basically say to which address I want to write to. Okay, so this is the write part we can say. Now if you want to read from memory, uh, again you may say from which address I want to read. So I will have a read address then there will be an output coming from the memory which will basically give you the data at that address. So we can say like read data. Now whether you need a separate read enable signal to read from a, a particular location up to you. If you want you can put it otherwise uh, that is optional. Okay. So basically we need these many signals from external world. Now internally uh, this is how we model a memory you will have several rows of uh, flip-flops. So each location in this memory will have a unique address. We start from address zero, then it can go all the way up to the maximum depth of the memory. So this is what we are going to call as the depth of the memory. Now how much data you can store in each row, each location, that will be decided by the width of the memory. So you can have 8 bits or 16 bit, 32 bit. Uh, when we go for FPGA design, uh, the granularity is a bit. So you can even have 3 bit, 5 bit, 7 bit, no issues. But if you look at practical uh, standard memory modules, the width will be always a multiple of 8 uh, number of bytes, okay, multiple of bytes. But we can model any width also, okay. So if you want to design a memory, the basic parameters uh, that you need are width and depth. That's it. Now, once I fix my width here, I can define what is the width of these buses because read data is reading data from one particular location. So the width of read data will be whatever is the width of the memory. Same way, width of this write data bus will be whatever is the width of each memory location. Now, the width of write address and read address will depend upon what is the depth of the memory. So he's basically saying to which address you want to write or from which address you want to read, right? So that depends upon what is the depth of the memory. So you know using n bit you can represent 2 to the power of n, right, numbers. So if you want to have a depth of d, which is 0 to d minus 1, how many bits you need? You will need log to the base of 2 d those many bits you will need. So that is the width of your right address. So let's say like log to the base 2d. Same way read address with this uh, log to the base 2d. So that's it. Now once we have this many, we can actually go ahead and do the design. So I'll start a new VLOG file. And let's call it uh, RAM. So let's call it like module RAM. So interface we will declare as usual input uh, clock. Whether a reset is needed or not, again optional. 
what you will do with a reset to a memory. You can maybe reset all the content of the memory to zero. But remember, zero and one, uh, they are same as far as a, a digital design is concerned. Uh, zero doesn't have any particular significance. Okay. So it's up to you if you want to reset the entire memory. If you have that uh, option, that will consume more chip area, more circuit logic. So better not to have a reset signal to your memory, especially this RAM. So input clock we have now input, let's say write enable. So should become high when you want to write to the memory. That is what the signal is doing. If you don't have the signal, what is going to happen? Uh, if you don't have this write enable, you will always have something coming to this write data, some value, and there will be some value at the write address. Okay, So whatever value is here will always get written to this address. We don't want that to happen. We want to write only some valid data to some valid address. That's why we have this control signal. So this is a mandatory signal. So the protocol says like, okay, if you look at the waveform, so we will have clock going like this. This write enable should remain low if you don't want to write. When you want to write something, you'll make it high like this. Then you have your write address. And there will be some value here. We don't care what values they are. When you want to write, you will place the actual address where you want to write. So if you want to write to address 10, you will place 10 there, same way, write data, uh, we don't care what is there, when write enable is low, but when write enable becomes high, whatever data we want to write, we will place it there, okay, maybe 100. I want to write to only one location, so I will keep the signal high only for one clock, then we will make it low, so these signals, yeah, after this, again, uh, we don't care. They can have the same value or any other value. Right? So what happens on this clock edge? Remember here, write enable is still low. So on this clock edge, this will get stored inside the memory. So that's why we need this uh, write enable. Now we have input, let's say, write address. So this is address for writing, of course. Now the width of it we discussed, we need to know the depth of the memory to specify it. Okay, so usually we take the depth as a power of two. So let's say like I'm making D equal to say 16. So we need only four bits to represent the address. Okay, so let's say like three down to zero right address. Now we need right data. Again, what should be the width? Let's say like each location is one byte. You can put whatever value you want. So write data. Okay. Data to be written. Now we have read address, same width, three down to zero. Read address. Then we have output, read data, seven down to zero. Okay, read data. I think we are done with all signals. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We have all of them. Let's see it. Let's call it, uh, okay. Let me take a new folder. Let's say like memory. Okay, this is my RAM topic. Now let's write the logic. So as I mentioned, first let's write uh, the logic for writing to the memory. Okay. Writing to memory logic. So what should happen? These synchronous so always at for such clock begin. What should happen if write enable is high? If write enable, this write data should get written into the memory. But where is the memory? Okay. So we need to model these cells also. Okay, these arrays. So as I mentioned, each row here is a bunch of flip-flops. So if you say you are with this eight, you will have eight flip-flops in one row. So total number of flip-flops will depend upon what is the width and what is the depth. So you will have this times these, those many flip-flops. So that is where this memory model is coming. Okay, so how we are going to model that two-dimensional array. So this is how we will model. So reg 
followed by the width of the memory. So your width is 7 down to 0. Then you need to give some name to this array, okay, this memory cells. Let's call it like, okay, you can call whatever you want, mem, followed by the depth. So our depth is 16. So this is how you should write. Reg, width, name, depth, okay? Not like C. It is not like mem, 7 down to 0, 15 down to 0. That means something else here. So here it should be a reg, width, name, depth. So if there is write enable, what should happen? Memory of write address okay, should become write data. That's it. This is the logic. So this is just like accessing arrays in C. So memory of write address, whatever is the write address, that memory location uh, should get the value of write data. So that's it. And now we can do the read logic. Now read logic, you have an option to make it synchronous or combinational. For example, if I say like always at star, which is combinational, I can say like read data is okay, memory of read address. So whatever is in the read address, that data will immediately go to read data. Okay. So if you look at the wave diagram, this is combinational, but still let me draw this clock. So suppose you have some read address here and you have a new read address here. Okay, so let's call it read address one. This is read address two. Since you have combinational, as soon as read address comes, you will have read data one. Here you will have read data two. This is one way of doing. Okay. So here we will say your read latency is zero. So latency basically means the time delay between you give something and you get the output. You give some input and after how many clock you will get the output. That's what we call as a latency. So here it is not taking any time. As soon as you give the read address, you get the read data. So that's why we call read latency is zero. Now if you write it as a sequential, this is how you write always at for such clock read data is memory of read address. Okay. So if you write like this, what will happen? There will be one clock latency between the read address and the data. So let's see. So I'll give the same read address and when the data will come. So if I give the read address here, because of that sequential circuit, the read data one will come only here. So what is the data here? We don't know, we don't care. So read data one will come here and here he will see read address two. So read data two will come here. So you'll see there is a one clock delay between giving the address and getting the output. So we'll say like here, our latency is one, basically means one clock delay. Okay, so the recommended one, the better way of doing it is to make it sequential. Again, the reason you will, you, you will learn again in the theory, the maximum frequency at which your circuit can operate and effect of pipelining, things like that. Uh, you will understand why we do like this. Okay, so it is a better way to write it in this way. So your read data will be one clock delay with respect to your read address. So this is how uh, it will look like. So since it is inside always block, here also we need to say all output reg read data like this. Okay, so we are done with the memory modeling. Now let's quickly see what circuit get implemented internally. So this, this memory array will remain there. Now we have to see what is happening with these guys. Okay. So you have your memory array here. So if you look at our write logic, what is written is if write enable is high, 
this write data should get stored in the memory which is specified by the write address here okay so we will have some combinational circuit here which takes that write enable and our write address and this guy he will have some signal going to each memory location okay so only if this particular signal is high data can get stored in that particular location only if this is high it will get stored here only if this is high it will get stored here so this combinational circuit uh, based on this address and write enable he will make only one of them high and the write data what happens to the write data write data will be connected to every row here so we have write data that will be going to every row here now although it is going unless the signal is high it won't get stored so that is the logic there similarly for read uh, you will have a combinational circuit here and he'll be getting data from all these rows and based on the read address he will choose only one of these inputs as the output so the output is basically our read data so read data so what is this big combination circuit he is just a multiplexer you can see he is getting data from all memory location and based on the read address he chooses only one of them so this is like your input this is like the control and this is like the output so this is a big multiplexer okay and this is like a big d multiplexer he takes only one write enable and write address and chooses only one of the output as high. So this is what is basically getting inside. Now the details of this combinational circuit, if you are interested, you can go ahead and write the Boolean expression and find out how it looks like. Fine, now let's see whether it is working or not. Uh, you can write a test bench and simulate it and see. But for quick testing, uh, let me work without uh, a test bench. Okay. Now when you look at the wave window, you can see clock write your write address, write data, read data, read address, everything. Now uh, here, uh, next to sim tab, you will see something called this memory list. If you go there, uh, he will list that two dimensional array also. And he will say what is the depth and width. If you wish, you can see the content of the memory directly. You can click here, view content, and he will show you what is the content of this memory so x means again uninitialized unknown at the beginning we don't know what is the content of each memory location let's see when we do simulation whether it gets updated or not so let's give some clock so clock as usual let's say like 10 nanosecond and let's make write enable low at the beginning okay write address also let's keep it low Right data also let's keep it low read address also let's keep it low and let's run for a few clock cycle okay let's say 10 nanosecond here also so you can see uh, nothing happens right read data is read because what is happening now can you guess because as per our code read data will always take data from the read address memory right what is the read address memory it is zero so he will take data from location zero which is uninitialized because of that it is read in color so let's write some data to the memory so i'll make write enable high here one you can write to any address let's write to address zero itself so i'll keep it zero let me write the data okay in binary one 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 zero 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 okay let's do it and uh, let's make it high i want to write to only one location so i will make write enable low after that even if you keep write enable high and keep the same address and data same data will get returned to the same location again and again okay it doesn't make any difference okay so here it became low so on this clock it might have got written let's go to the memory tab and see anything happened here you can see okay so here this is location zero this is location 15 this is in this way like arabic okay right to left 
so lower address will be the rightmost like the least significant byte and uh, leftmost will be more significant but this is what we call as little indian representation also little indian okay lower address on right if you have lower address on the left we will say it as big indian anyway you can see it got updated here another interesting thing is your read data is showing the same data on this clock so what just happened so here we made write enable high here we wrote the here we place the data it got written to the memory on this clock edge and because of this sequential logic this data or this data will come to the output only on the next clock edge okay that is what our one clock latency now let me write to some other address let's say okay address 10 tick t 10 let me say and data let's say one zero one zero one zero one zero okay let's see i didn't make the right enable high so we need to make that high otherwise it won't get written okay it's also interesting you can see nothing happens to that memory so only when i make right enable high okay here i made it high it might have got written on the next clock and you can actually see here it got written let me make it low and that's it but there is no change in read data because the read address is still zero so let's make read address as 10 so force tick t 10 here and you can see on this clock edge this data came out again one clock let me see so this is the basic modeling of the memory i will add one more thing uh, then we'll stop so here if you look at our code it is not parameterized right our memory width is always 8 and depth is always 16 but it will be better if we can parameterize it we have discussed it before uh, so that later if i want to change this width and depth I can just change the parameters and everything just happen like that or when i instantiate this module somewhere else at that time i can configure what should be the depth and width so we will parameterize it so hash let's say parameter so here i can say width equal to some value let's put the default as 8 and depth let's say 16 so we parameterized it so write data what should come here it is width minus one this one is also width minus one now this memory array here also this is width minus one and this one is depth minus one okay uh, makes sense now this address width as we discussed they should be locked to the base two of depth okay so that should be written using a very log system function which is called dollar c log 2 okay that means log to the base 2 depth minus 1 here also dollar c log 2 depth minus 1 again this is a hardware description language let me clarify it is not like in hardware uh, we are going to calculate the log of some number and all. no if you are doing simulation this value will be at the time of compilation will be found by the simulator and he will replace it if we are going for implementation the implementation tool again compilation time statically he will find out what is this value and this will be replaced by that value okay that's how it is happening this has nothing to do with actual hardware implementation okay so let's recompile no errors so restart and basically same thing will happen so you can simulate and see you will get the exact same thing the advantage is now it is fully parameterized if you want to change the width to say 16 tomorrow you can just change here now it is a 16 wide 16 deep ram if you want uh, 1024 deep 1k deep you just change the depth to 1024 now if you put large width and depth your simulator he will be taking more time to simulate it because he has to model 
more memory, more RAM, right? So that will consume more resources of your computer when you are simulating. When you actually build the chip, if you have larger memory, of course, that will take more chip area. If you are using FPGA, that will take more FPGA resources. So keep that in mind. So never go for overkill. Whatever is required, just use uh, that much. Thank you.